just love films and the, the whole process and the whole thing. Even the medium of television, I love watching films on television. But it's not the same as the big screen and the atmosphere. When you get an audience and you get the reaction, you know, it's sort of contagious and, and you know, I, I just love the whole medium of it. Myself and my cousin, Donna, who is the son of John James. He and I now alternate nights. We show it a night now and again. They started it, and the way things are going now, technology, Don and I will be finishing it. You know. I was first introduced to the cinema through my father, who was the previous projectionist, the first projectionist. He and his, uh, his brother, John James, my uncle, they alternated, I think, I don't know, I'm not quite sure of how they ran the thing, but both of them showed the films at one time or another. For years, I think my father, was showing the silent films when they came in. I don't know what date that was, but it goes back that far. And uh, just following him up as you do with your father, I would, and I just, he was showing me the film, uh, the operating box, the projection room, and the uh, process, use process to get the film together and, and the things that they used and everything, you know, and I, I was just, I'm just attracted to it. Well, I'm just about now to put the film together again, which is the next film on the agenda. And the film comes in the format of parts, separate parts, which we have to put together onto a larger reel. I have to rewind this film because the start, this is the start of the reel, which is not what we want. We want to get the end of the reel to go on first. system was the, uh, when we had the two projectors, one here and one more or less in this position here. Um, when the films came in, they would come in in metal boxes in them days, not, uh, not these boxes, no, metal boxes. And depending on how many parts, it would be five, six, seven or eight parts uh, to, uh, to any one film. I took the box with the film on it and over here to the rewinding room to get the film ready. 
So I take the, the, the reel of film out, and place it on here, and rewind it onto one of these spools here on this side. I take part one, and put it there, part two, part three, part four, and so on. When we get ready to show the, show the films, we would take out the first part. This would be the first part. You would take it out. Are we ready? On the old projector, there was a box here for this reel and a box down here to, for the pickup spool. So you would put your spool on here, lace your film through the projector onto the take-up spool here, and thread something similar to that there. Uh, you'd have a lamp house here with, uh, with carbons before before the, the bulbs came in. We had a negative and a positive carbon and we'd strike up the carbons in the lamp house, get them lit, make sure the amps were right and check that everything was okay, the film was okay, framed, sound was on and basically start the machine and open up the projector onto the screen and open the curtains. Basically it was from what is childhood, like you know, as I say, uh, my father uh, was a projectionist and that was my uncle Neil. As the years went on, uh, got older and then we got, I would watch him threading up the machine and other projectors, like you know. So then there came a chance then one day that um, uh, I was in the hall and I said, now we'll take a chance and see if. I can master this, you know, so I put on the reel, film, lit up the, the machine and got the sound right, got the sound going and uh, everything worked out grand. I was all chuffed myself. I must have been, what, 13, 14 at the time, you know. I never took an interest in that end of it. Uh, Donna, because Donna's father, he worked with my, with my father in the projection room, so Donna took an interest. My father, Neil Doherty Sr., was born just a short distance from the hall. His, his family home, where he was reared with an aunt, would just look over on the cinema. So my father, from an early age, was very interested in the, in the, in the hall in various ways, especially when the travelling people come in with movie films and that sort of thing. He was very interested in that. He probably started working in here as a part-time voluntary worker I would say from his teens, late 18s, and he was there until he was over 80, I think at 82 years of age, he had decided that he wouldn't trust himself going up and down stairs here. So I stayed in the family like that, and uh, it's still in the family right up to the present day because my brother Willie has stopped. Bosco has now just stopped about maybe coming up to a year now that he hasn't been in the cinema because of health reasons. And Paddy is still in. That's rewind. So now I put it onto a split spool for convenience sake. The closing credits goes on first. Eh? So where you go? To the ordinary man in the street, but the source doesn't matter to them. But to be hands-on and you're actually using the film, you feel the texture of the film and the whir of the projection machine. You know things like that. It's a wee bit of nostalgia with it, you know. Things were different in uh, the early days. Like there was more, more involvement with the project, with the projection, and more, more. Um, more to do, more to do and, and more to concentrate on. But uh, we had good times in the, in, in the hall too, years ago, like you know. Big changes, big changes since. We'll have to make a new splice in this film to connect the two parts together.
Cotton steak. You ensure that the seven seven tracks on the same side on both. Same again. spot. So when we're taking the funnel apart again, we don't miss the join. The spicer not only cuts the sellotape but uh, cuts the perforations in the sprocket hold as well. Also when the film goes through the actual projector it's inverted, it's upside down, and you have to watch out for that as well. It may sound funny to put a filament upside down, and what's going to happen on the screen, but as it passes through the lens, there's a, a magnifying glass, if you like, right? similar to one of these. I'm sure when you're younger, maybe you might have played about with a magnifying glass, but the more you look at it at a certain level, you put it out, everything looks upside down because the, the rays are refracted. I think you knew what I'm talking about, but that's what happens. It turns the film 180 degrees and you've got it upright by the time it reaches the screen. No, they show one film maybe for one week, two weeks, three weeks, or a month, you know, and the same across you know, the whole country, whatever, like, you know, you, you just haven't. It's just one film now at a time, and maybe only w one film. As in, as I said before, you know, you'd you'd have a a, a documentary, you'd have maybe a cartoon, uh, you would have a serial. You have a serial every week, um, maybe a, a past matter, and maybe an old documentary. You had the ads, and then you had the what they call the big picture, the main picture, like you know. So you had pretty good entertainment for two and a half, maybe three hours, so depending on, you know, what the programme was and what, what was what, what was coming on, like, you know. Now, the cinema was that popular. It, they queued up for every show. And the cheaper seats was here on the right, and they would queue down the side of the, of the old auditory. A very rowdy crowd, I must say, was the people that went for the cheaper seats. They carried on, and the... They were, they were pushing and shoving to try and see who could get up nearest to the door to get the best seats whenever the doors opened. Now, when they graduated from the right-hand side and they moved to the left-hand side, that meant they were with the girlfriend and they were, they were going to the lower balcony or they were going up to the more expensive seats in the balcony. And they were, they were better behaved on that side. They were with, with the girlfriend friend arm in arm and they were, they were doing what they were told and the... They, 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 they weren't as noisy as the other crowd. But it was a great uh, patter between the two groups, you see. And then when the doors finally opened, there was this mad rush in. There'd be no more queues, I don't think. The days are numbered. The cinemas are going to get smaller. Or the screens will be less, I think. And people are buying big screens now for the home shows. You can get a, you can get a gable wall size TV if you want and download the film from the computer and ask in a few friends and have your own intimate premiere with the bar in the corner and nibbles and, <laughs> and stop it whenever you want to go for a loo break. So that's the way it's going to go, I think. Yeah. Number three. It's all repetition.
84. Hit. Nobody's going to notice, you know, that we won't make a big ripple when me and Donna stop. I would mourn the loss of it, you know, because it's something else that's been put on a shelf because of the te technological revolution type thing, you know. If the day ever comes that Donna and uh, Patty decides that they're packing in the, you know, projecting the films, I don't know what's going to happen whether the cinema could afford to move forward to more modern things that are, are now available, digital stuff that's available, that they, they would need a person there to actually physically do the films. Um, I don't know if that's going to happen, but I could see the films stopping and uh, the place just gone on without showing films, just having their bingo and their and their musicals and their pantomimes and that sort of thing. Hopefully in the future there will be a cinema in Bunkrana for a long time to come, you know. I'd like, that, I'd like to think that would be the case anyways, you know. Uh, it's been here a long time now, like, you know, and you wouldn't like to see it closing down. Well, it's sad to see in a way, like, you know, we did our bit and and we, we enjoyed doing it, most of the time. On the last show, I'll, I'll not bother switching off the machine and just let the credits roll, one, two, three numbers, and then that bit, big white screen. Somebody else can knock it off.